A solenoid is by definition is something that has uh, some turn like this and then you keep turning, 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 turning and it's relatively long. So it has n number of turns, n number, total number of turns and it has a length uh, L. Okay, so how do we find the B field of this? The reason why we can use Ampere's law here is if the length is pretty long, the magnetic field inside of the wire is going to be pretty uniform. As a matter of fact, we're going to have a lab on this as well. The magnetic field inside is going to be pretty uniform. The magnetic field outside, just outside right here, is going to be approximately zero. Not exactly, but approximately. That means if you have a coil that is kind of long, most of its magnetic field is concentrated inside of the coil, and it, it doesn't leak out from the sides. Or if it leaks out, it's very weak. OK? So what I could do is I could do my little Amperian uh, integral this way, like this. So imagine here's the coil, here is the coil, imagine, and then the, I could do a little Amperian integral like that, and then the coils are coming like this, okay, and so I could apply Ampere's uh, law. Integral B dot DL is mu zero uh, uh, I enclosed. So what's going to happen is the magnetic field outside is already zero. Uh, the magnetic field inside is this way, right? Like that. So if I do B dotted into DL along this, this edge or this edge, like this edge here or this edge, the B dot the DL is zero, since the dot product of 90 degrees is zero. So the only B dot the DL that remains is this one. B, this B times DL, so that just gives you the length of that. And then the current enclosed is how many, it depends on how many wires are coming out and going back in, in within this length. Right? They're coming out, and then they're going back in. Out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. So, right? so basically, the current enclosed is the number of loops. It doesn't necessarily have to be the total number of loops, right? It could be like n prime. And then this is times the current carried by each one. Therefore, the magnetic field inside of the solenoid is going to have this behavior, mu zero n prime over L times I. OK? Now, n prime over L is actually the ratio, if the, if, if the, if the coil is uniformly wrapped, if the coil is uniformly wrapped, then it's the same ratio as the big N divided by the big L. The total number of coils divided by the total length of the solenoid. So B inside and that is the formula. That's the equation for the magnetic field inside of a solenoid. Mu zero big N over L I and a lot of times it's written this way. Mu zero little n times I where little n is the number of turns divided by the length of the solenoid.
It resembles the equation for the n number of coils that we did. Remember this one? What was the magnetic field there, the inside the center? N mu zero i over 2r. So let's see what the difference is. This one has n mu zero i over l, where l is the length of the uh, solenoid. Here it's n mu zero i over 2r, where r is the radius of the solenoid. So they both, they both have a unit of length down on the denominator. This is meters and this is also meter, but it, it's a different meaning. That one is the length and this one is the radius. So uh, the only time where they produce the same strength of magnetic field is if 2R equals L. If 2R is equal to L, then they produce the same B field. In other words, if you find a coil, a, one, a coil that has a certain number of turns, if you find a coil with the same diameter, 2R is the diameter, right? If you find a coil with the same diameter as the length of that solenoid, they produce the same B field. Okay? The other case uh, besides solenoid.